It's an ugly question, so let's brace ourselves for a second. Um, <clears throat> okay, so the the listener wants to know that uh, basically because there are these constant uh, controversies, which you know, for those of you on the other side of the pod, controversies uh, that uh, that that keep emerging from the Catholic Church regarding uh, you know the the predator priests uh, taking advantage of children. Is there something in their literature that, uh, what, what is the word they're using here? That, uh, that causes makes. Causes this kind of reaction? Yeah, yes. basically that's, that's yes. what it is. Is there something in their literature that, that yes. makes this seem to be, uh, something that won't go away? Is there something in the organization? In the yes. organizational principles that promote this kind of behavior. That's, that's the word yeah. he used. Okay. Yeah. That promote okay. this kind of behavior because it seems to, uh, although, all, well, they, they point out that although many religious figures are caught quite often in this sort of, uh, pattern of behavior, that it seems to be, uh, a disease within the Catholic organization uh, uh, seemingly more than others, and they're wondering if there's a specific reason for that. That's the whole question. And that's yeah. that's based on the fact that during the time that we were off, there was a lot of revelations about thousands of victims, uh, not only in Pennsylvania, but in a couple of other states. I, I know it's you know gone right down the memory hole once the news is done with it. But uh, quite honestly, if you've been keeping track lately, keeping score, you'll notice that there's at least two, three thousand more victims that have been recognized in a court of law over the past couple of weeks that, uh, you know, again, over the, the period of the last 60, 70 years were abused by uh, individuals in authority in the Catholic Church. And, uh, yes, the news media covers it for a moment. As soon as it's not shocking to you, it disappears. And then we wait for the next scandal to emerge. But they want to know uh, what your viewpoint is on uh, whether this is uh, something that is built in to the Catholic Church and therefore promotes that sort of behavior. Okay. I have an answer for that. <clears throat> I don't know if you're ready for this answer, but you said it was a very controversial subject. Well, I'm going to give you a really controversial answer. Okay. Actually, actually, if you do the research, if you really sincerely want to spend weeks and months and years, as I have, going through the biblical accounts in the Bible and then looking at the flow of religion from the three major religions, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, all three are based on a, on a far more ancient religion we call Hinduism. But if you start to look at the esoteric uh, hidden connections of the belief systems of the three major religions today, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, all three major religions today are based on the worship of sex, period. End of sentence. And when you begin to look into the biblical dictionaries and encyclopedias and really start to devote uh, years of your life to studying the words and the terms and the symbols in religion, you will find that the, uh, the all three major religions and probably most of the religions of the world are all actually based on the worship of sex, period. Okay, but that Jordan, a, I've got to stop you here for one reason. That, is, but that's a fact of life that can be proven in a court. No, and and I believe you, but I got to stop you for one reason only. If I were now, I'm just going to speak from my heart, from my position, right? Mm -hmm. If I were to become obsessed with sex, okay, um, I would chase women, Jordan. I I I I would clearly just chase women. I mean, th th this is what I would do. Okay, I'm, I'm that kind of guy. Uh, this is something else, though, because this is the preying on ch uh, upon children. And I, I got to say that, you know, you, you hear stories about cult leaders and they take on many wives and they uh, they, they have, you know, harems and they have, uh, you know, these group marriages and whatever else. And, and, and people do this. They become obsessed with sexuality and sexuality could be throughout this entire thing. But it almost seems like 
there's something darker than just that going on. Because you, you hear the argument now and then, well, gee, if they just let priests marry, then they wouldn't have this problem. I, I don't buy that. No. Because there's, there's something there's something worse happening here. It, <clears throat> if, if, if priests became obsessed with sex and... Then, then, then why is it that there's not a lot of women being preyed upon? Why is it that there's not a lot of, you know, I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't happen. It does happen. But what I'm saying is that when you're talking about the preying upon children, victimizing children, that to me is not, it, it's not part of the same equation as sex being pushed forward. Sex being pushed forward is going to, you know, uh, uh, encourage you to follow through on your already existent uh, proclivities, right? Yep, yep, of course. Of course. So, so what? What is it? A, th- th- this is a little different when you say. I mean, because like I said, if I were, let, let's just imagine for a moment, I, I was a priest. Um, if I were a priest and I were, you know, mindset or oh, sex, 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 all I would think about is women. All I would think about is how many women I could get, how I could, you know, uh, uh, you know, convince them to come be with me, this kind of thing, you know, multiple women, whatever. This is what I would do. But that is not the direction that this sort of thing keeps emerging in. I mean, yes, we do hear about, uh, you know, there have been popes who've had children. There have been uh, cardinals who've had children with women. They've had relationships. They've had mistresses. They had. You talked about the nuns and how they, you know, came into the equation. But this whole thing with children, it, it, it's got to be a different animal than just sex, Jordan, doesn't it? It's absolutely different. I mean, a, a different animal. But nonetheless, it is still sex. And I am telling you that if you look at the history of all three of the major religions, it's just profoundly filled with uh, with uh, scriptures talking about sex with children, sex with kids, young children. Uh, Judaism is filled with it. Uh, Christianity is filled with it, and especially Islam. Islam, you can you can actually rent a little five or eight, seven or eight year old. A girl for a night, and and it's referred to as a marriage, and you pay the family a marriage price, and then they will give you the permission, and the religion gives you permission, and there's a particular word for it, which it slips my mind right now, but in Islam, you can rent a little seven or eight year old for the night, and it's called a marriage, and you and you and it's a whole uh, ritual, a little ritual that you go through. And you are actually married to the seven-year-old, an eight, a nine-year-old, and and uh, and then you can live like you're married with with that child. And then the next day, at a certain time, you have to bring them back, and the marriage is annulled. But that's actually in the religion. You can actually rent a child for the night, and and it becomes an actual marriage. And there's a term that uh, is used in Islam that denotes that, that you are merely renting the child for the night and having a marriage, a legitimate, de jure, real marriage, but for just for tonight. And you pay then you pay the price and you pay uh, the family. And that's that's perfectly permitted within Judaism, I mean, within uh, Islam. So uh, when you see all of these older men marrying little girls, go on the go on the web and you will see it. In the Middle East, where they have massive weddings with, you know, 30, 40 young men marrying little girls, five, six, seven years old. And they have massive marriages where these grown men are marrying six year olds and seven year olds. And but that's the, that's, that's the Islam. That's the religion of Islam, period. I don't care if you don't like it, but that's the name of the tune. And then, of course, when you get into Judaism, my God, there's all kinds of stuff in the in the in the Jewish religion about the, uh, you know, especially in the in the old Jewish philosophies and the religion that they don't talk about today. But it's in the it's in the different religious books of the Jews today. But the Jews don't make a big advertisement about it. But it's there if you want to go back and start reading in the Jewish literature. About how the the rabbis said it's perfectly fine for an adult man to have sex and to live with a, a seven year old or five year old, whatever. And if it's a male or female, it doesn't matter. And sex is sex; it doesn't matter. 
if it's male or female, and to have sex with a five-year-old, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. That's in the Jewish scriptures. That's in the Jewish uh, Talmud. And it goes on to talk about the difference uh, uh, that people may think are, are bad and wrong, but in point of fact, in the Talmud, talks about if a man has sex with a boy uh, six or eight years old, there's nothing wrong with that. It's not considered anything evil at all because the boy doesn't know the difference, so uh, there's nothing, no one's been harmed by it. That's in Judaism. That is the Jewish religion today. Go back and read it. Mm. Go back and get the old Jewish books, the Talmud and the Babylonian, or the uh, the Babylonian Talmud in particular, and read it. Read what it says in English. It talks about uh, grown men having sex with little girls, five, six, seven years old. Uh, nothing wrong with that at all, period. That's part of the religion. Well, then you come to the Catholic Church and Christianity. Well, my God, if you go back into the into the history of Christianity, uh, you know, with all the stories about uh, you know Moses and, and all the the sexual stuff that's going on in the church during the uh, early Middle Ages, during the founding, especially after 325, with the coming of the Vatican, when there were children who were slaves, they were brought in, and that's it's a whole mindset. In religion today, of the of the interest that um, adults have in the the youth and the beauty of young children, and so, but it's it's part of it's actually a part of the religion of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. All three are replete. If you will take the mm. time and read their ancient books of all three major religions, you will find. Everywhere in the old scriptures, in the old Jewish scriptures, I was talking about sex with children. Sex with children. You can get married to a little five or seven year old for the night. Uh, my God. I mean, it's all, it's all there if you just want to take time and go back and read the stuff yourself and stop thinking in terms of being all holy and righteousness. You better go back and find out what these religions really are doing and what they really came from and what they're actually promoting. And that's why today the world is now replete, completely overwhelmed by pedophilia and sex with children because that's the basis for all three, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. You don't like that? Go back and do the research yourself and you will find I am exactly correct. 